what is data mining so this is our first lecture in this semester to give you some overall idea of what data mining is recently the term of data mining is uh, changed to what is called predictive analytics so interchangeably you can hear that uh, term uh, predictive analytics uh, which means exactly uh, data mining so how can we uh, use data mining in the business domain historically data mining was born uh, from the computer science field or discipline uh, and mainly was used to uh, discover uh, patterns in data uh, such as fraud detection uh, or for discovering uh, some type of uh, pattern in DNA uh, sample data uh, to discover uh, the uh, reason for disease which gene for example uh, cause that type of disease and many other different fields however for the last couple of years not longer than three years i would say data mining became part of the uh, business because businesses started to uh, understand that they can take advantage of the knowledge that they can uh, uh, collect uh, from their uh, customers to uh, better profit uh, their organization so if you look at uh, the following picture here uh, imagine those uh, are customers on amazon website and as we all of us know amazon website uh, sells products uh, started with books but now uh, there are many different types of uh, products uh, including movies and music and uh, you name it so in order to to build a business intelligent technology that can produce uh, some type of a profiling uh, for each customer, uh, Amazon uh, actually uh, looks at uh, the behavior of uh, their customers while surveying their website. At the same time, uh, they uh, look at the historical information about their customers, each individual, uh, how often they, for example, uh, purchase uh, from Amazon, uh, how much uh, they spend on Amazon website, and uh, also how long they have been uh, users uh, on the Amazon website. And beside that, uh, they collect data about what type of credit card information the customer uses, also what kind of communication the customer prefer, which type of email, is it, uh, uh, is it organizational, educational email, the one that ends with .org or .edu, or emails uh, that uh, generic generic type of email such as gmail and yahoo uh, or emails that end uh, with uh, businesses uh, such as dot com so all this type of information already amazon uh, collecting and each one of those users has a unique number and that number represents the profile of that user for instance uh, i uh, purchase more than my students books from amazon so for amazon i am a customer who uh, highly likely to spend more money on their website and visit the website more often so when they want to send a promotion, uh, if they notice that I haven't been purchasing for a period of time, the promotion that they send me is going to be different than a similar customer or maybe a student who hasn't been purchased recently from Amazon. However, the amount of purchase that student uh, make uh, that student makes on Amazon is not as much as the amount of purchases I make. So the promotion I would receive from 
Amazon uh, to encourage me to come back and purchase uh, more books or maybe opening uh, a new type of uh, of sell products for example they incorporated uh, recently uh, as you know the music uh, and Alexa so the promotions they're gonna send to me is not gonna be as similar as to the one they sent to a student who is not so active uh, as much as me so therefore each one of us has this number and that number represent uh, some type of knowledge regarding the profile of that user over their website while browsing purchasing uh, communicating uh, maybe becoming a seller on their website you name it so the whole idea uh, of data mining or predictive analytics in the business domain is that you want uh, to use uh, or the organizational uh, structure or the business uh, model changed uh, in recent years for all the business organizations in a way that they are taking advantage of the data available data of their customers it doesn't matter what kind of data transactional data behavioral data uh, profiling data so this is what they are doing they are taking this data and they are trying to uh, use it as a strategic asset to be able to make uh, some type of business collective experience uh, that can gather from from the customers in order to learn from this data and accordingly uh, based on this data based on this information about each customer they want to treat each customer individually and that's what is called the concept of personalization so eventually we're gonna end up one day that when you uh, uh, may be using your computer to browse the internet all the sites that you can see will be totally different than the one i see now uh, i see from my computer uh, and you can see that trend recently so when you log in to facebook for example or instagram or you know any let's say website uh, Barnes and Noble or Amazon uh, the commercials that you get the recommendation for example on Amazon when Amazon tells you oh that person who purchased this book similar to the one you purchased recently also purchased this book so they give you recommendations for other type of products so this, for the same happens to me but however the type of recommendations the personalization uh, uh, of books that they recommend to me are different than the one I recommend to you because of my history on Amazon website what type of books I purchased what type of products I purchased okay so this is the whole idea eventually that's gonna apply to everything on the web it's very expensive to do that so only big companies now are doing this type of activities Facebook for example you go to Facebook and you see all those commercial commercials uh, happening on the next to the Facebook uh, and pictures of products that they are related to whatever you did over the internet over the last couple of days and those are different recommendations for purchasing than the one I see when I go to my Facebook account for instance so the idea is that the goal of those businesses in future to give this personalized experience to their customers so they can enjoy their uh, browsing behavior for example and that applies also not only to the web that applies to uh, in-store businesses for instance best buy uh, if you do your purchases in in-store uh, and you go to Best Buy and you purchase some new products you will notice a couple of days after that the coupons that come to your house address are related somehow to the products that you purchase the same if you purchased uh, food from the Walmart or from Kroger you name it you get this uh, promotions at the end of your checkout that are related somehow to the products that you purchase 
in the past in addition to some new uh, product that you never purchased just they try to tempt you to purchase a, a new brand that they think highly likely if you knew they have them that you would purchase them and next time with this discount they offer you so the whole idea is using the predictive analytics algorithms we are uh, going to play the role as an analyst in any business uh, domain and try to learn from the data we're going to try to learn and collect all this experience all this knowledge based on the sales records customer profiles when i said profiles for example uh, what is uh, when you filled out an application in best buy you listed there what is your salary uh, if you didn't list the salary at least they ask you do you own a car uh, so you listed there so this profile that fits you is going to dictate what kind of promotions you're going to get in future not only that that profile that you filled in and they compare it with a credit card agency they know that this is not a lie this is true what you said and they give you a credit card uh, best buy credit card the amount that you have on your best buy card is different than the amount i have based on my profile okay so the whole idea what we are going to do we're going to learn you have data and you're working as a business analyst in this uh, domain in, in let's say best buy you became the manager so you're trying to discover some strategic insight and business intelligence and in a way that you can help your business to make a decision to make a, a good decision uh, regarding uh, the, uh, the 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 buyers okay and those decisions cannot be done manually because you have a uh, hundreds and thousands and ten thousands sometimes of customers you need to have a tool you need to have a, a software you need to have a program that can help you to discover the patterns in your customers and give you business rules that tell you okay uh, uh, this customer uh, you can send him this type of product with with uh, for example discount of 10 percent however that other customer based on the profile that i see here you should send him uh, for example this product that cost five thousand dollar maybe a tv uh three with the three d facilities maybe it's a curved tv you name it and give that person we predict that if you send that person this promotion of 10 percent highly likely that person is going to come and purchase it from our store so they know everything about what we do in the store and over the web and they keep tracking all our behaviors and accordingly the promotions you get over time are uh, dictated by this type of programs using data mining which is predictive analytics softwares that helps you to build models uh, of your customers to take advantage of them to sell them more products and not to load them this is a big issue not to load them to other competitive companies okay you don't want if you are the manager of best buy you don't want that customer who regularly comes to your store and he never purchased a tv for the last five years for example you don't want that customer to go and buy his or her tv uh, from a competitor like circuit city or maybe uh, go to the mall or I, I don't know or online from amazon you want to take advantage of that knowing this information about your customer will help you to give a very good discount and specifically to that customer and you know it's gonna take it and it's gonna purchase it from you okay now so the whole idea is you have multiple type of data that you can use uh, in your organization and you want to have some type of wisdom you want to gain wisdom from this data by creating models and we have uh, a software we're going to use called rapid miner this is a software that's going to model the profiles of customers and it give me and it's going to give me decisions and it's going to give me business rules that help me to take 
a competitive advantage against other company. So what type of data? You have the customer profile, uh, for example, where that customer lives, what kind of uh, salary he or she has, uh, uh, okay, so you know which uh, level category that person, what is his address exactly, what's his telephone number, and all the information about that person. Beside that, uh, and this information has been given when the person applied for a Best Buy card, for example. If you are a manager uh, in a bank, that information will be for a customer who uses your bank. So you have all this information about that customer. If he's married or not, does he have kids or not? So all this information. Beside that, the customer behavior is what you collect uh, uh, either by uh, the activities that customer does when it comes to your uh, to your organization. So if it's in if you work for Best Buy, uh, you are talking about a, a user who uh, comes to the store, for example, and purchase uh, equipment from Best Buy. Uh, if a uh, user is an uh, online user, also you can have access uh, to their online activities uh, through what is called uh, the customer contact logs. You can see this from, from the browsing behaviors. So if I went to Best Buy website, logged into my account, and I started looking for laptops, for example, I didn't purchase, I'm just looking at price, uh, for different types of laptops and then I decided at the end no I'm not gonna purchase in two three days what I will notice that either I will get this uh, this promotion of discount in uh, in similar type of laptops coming from Best Buy or I will get an email so that's a type of a tracking even without purchasing so the whole idea you are uh, all the businesses are doing this if you're not doing that you're gonna uh, end up bankrupt because if you don't track what's happening in your customers uh, behind the scene activities then you are not you're losing those customers to other companies so the idea is you take advantage of these data you create some type of models and those models will help you to predict what that person is going to do next and here where is your goal you know that person highly likely is gonna buy a tv because he didn't buy tv for the last five years because uh, what else he was browsing tvs on best buy website this is how you have this information even you know exactly what kind of brands he was uh, trying to uh, to browse so you take advantage of this information and you send discount uh, to their address home address or by email uh, okay, so one thing you have to understand that creating a model is, is not sufficient. After you create a model, your role is to apply this model on the data so you can predict what's going to happen. Okay, and sometimes you use what is called scoring a customer, which means you knew in the past a, a similar customer who uh, was browsing activities like yours uh, in the past, what they ended up doing, you have this information in your data. So you apply similar type of concepts and that's what is called the scoring. You're scoring the information about customer that didn't buy yet, for example, a TV, on a data that in the past customers bought TVs with similar type of profile, which means similar type of salary, similar type of location place, similar type of activities over the web, and then you give this recommendation and you send the, uh, the response, which is in this case, maybe a promotion to that person. Okay, accordingly, when you say that you applied uh, a customer to a model and then you scored that person on a model and you come up with a decision, to send a promotion, this is what you, is called also the business logic. You are creating some type of a business rule. That business rule is an actionable business rule. Uh, it could be uh, such as mail a solicitation, suggest a cross-sell option, or you are worried about retention of that person. You might also send him just uh, 
updating his profile to a better profile without even uh, letting him pay extra. That happens usually in telecommunications. So you see those customers that uh, in, in uh, the internet uh, type of uh, contracts like Spectrum here in Bowling Green. So you have those customers and Spectrum is worried. Notice that some customers, if they don't update their movie set or the TV show that they are watching, like the Showtime and etc., and they haven't been active for a pretty of time they sense that this customer is gonna maybe leave them and go have another contract let's say with AT&T uh, with DirecTV so what they do they send this um, update feature we we updated your internet speed from 100 gig to 200 gig with no no increase in payment so you the customer will be happy and they will retain that customer that kind of uh, business uh, rule or business logic you come up with based on the predictive model you built. And another example, just to show you how the model is built, we're going to go through all this during the semester. We're going to have uh, real cases. So in the time, be just explaining to you what you are doing. So what, you know, a simple example. For instance, let, let us assume uh, that uh, we have each row of those is one customer, okay? And each uh, column is one attribute or you call it one variable or you can call it uh, dependent and dependent variables. How about that? We are trying to predict what that person is going to purchase based on what that person purchased in the past and some profile information. So we have our dependent variables, okay, uh, are the number of purchases, last purchase, the gender, and the income. And the dependent variable, the one that we are trying to find, depends on all the rest, for example, based on the model we're going to build, is we're going to know if highly likely that person is going to purchase what? What that person next purchase is going to be based on the previous purchases. This is a simple example. We're going to see more examples that uh, really make sense. But in the time being, imagine the following. When the model notices that that person purchased shoes in the last purchase, it was male and he has high income, but highly likely if you send a promotion for gloves, he's going to purchase it. Okay. Uh, what else? Uh, for example, here we have a female uh, with, uh, okay, she purchased gloves last time and her income is medium. Uh, the model will say how you like it, she's going to purchase a hat, okay, etc. And look at the last one that doesn't make sense. What is the relationship between gloves and piano? Yes, you're going to get some rules that don't make any sense to you. And we're going to learn how to deal with stuff like this okay here what you call this type of information you are training data and this type of data is called the flat table because we only have one data table we don't have like in access 10 tables related to each other with some key element the table is simple it's one table has all the information about that customer okay and this is what we are trying to predict this is our dependent variable on the rest so, so the decision of the glove depend on attribute called last purchase okay in our case the first row was shoes okay also the gloves decision depends on if the gender was male okay and if the income is high okay now what i would like to remind you always that the best business model that can give recommendation to their customers uh, is a model that can distinguish one customer from the other like all of us should be considered as a snowflake. No one looks like the other. So for example, the biggest company in the world that knows how to treat their customers, uh, knows how to treat customers individually in a personalized experience is Amazon. 
because they started long period of time ago, long time ago, and they were the beginners in this domain, which is called collaborative filtering techniques. This is, was my uh, dissertation, actually part of it in that area uh, for my PhD. So Amazon is capable of doing that because they had plenty of historical data they collected over time and they took advantage uh, to utilize this information to keep track of their customers and provide their customers with the best and the most individual experience. Okay. So, uh, so if we want to look, we're going to look at one of those models in the semester called the decision tree model for cross sell. What that means, it's very easy, a way to create business rules. So it starts like uh, when you create the model and the model has a, a measurement, specific measurement to decide uh, which attribute among those three we saw here which one is the most important uh, to decide what the customer is going to buy next okay and there is a measurement uh, so for example softwares like SaaS uses specific type the log uh, profit uh, type of measurement uh, the rapid miner use different type of measurement to decide uh, which is the purity of uh, the division and you can use both either the purity or the noise in the data okay we're going to talk about this when we touch base on decision tree uh, in general uh, just uh, as i said this is the overall showing you what the meaning of data mining so you are going to use data mining techniques which is called machine learning techniques or algorithms to help you, you give the data to that uh, to that machine learning algorithm, in this case, decision tree, and the decision tree look into the data and find that the best way to know what the person is going to do next or what the person is going to purchase next in this case is to start to ask the question, did he buy shoes or not? So if the person bought the shoes, okay, and was female highly likely the next step to buy either a hat or a gloves okay now look at that if the person really last purchase was shoes so the person purchased shoes and had high income doesn't matter if female or not female and had high income highly likely that person will purchase shoes or piano which is have no relationship but that's what the model found us okay this is one of the most important uh, graph that you're gonna see at the end of the semester the last month of the semester in october and accordingly you're going to use it to understand uh, your uh, outcome of the outcome of your project so imagine the following you have a company uh, that you are the analyst in this company okay let us make it more um, simpler uh, imagine that you are the analyst for best buy and best buy decided to uh, to create uh, a campaign uh, for promotion campaign or let's say uh, sending coupons uh, campaign to attract customers during the uh, black friday okay thanksgiving is coming so let's say that's the business problem you are solving here your uh, the CEO of your company gave you this data about customers uh, behavior last year and is telling you here is what those customer have been doing over the last year and I want you to make for me a decision that I want to send uh, only the most important customer only 10% of the customers in our store so you can imagine like best buy maybe they have uh, um, let's say 20 or let's make it easy 10,000 customers okay you only have to find the thousand 10 percent 
thousand customers from those customers that you have a profile and behavior information about them and activities over the last year your goal is to find the 10 top 10 percent of those customers that they are the most important uh, budget wise and uh, they're gonna spend the most money and they're gonna really respond to your campaign which is promotion campaign you're sending let's say 10 percent coupon and only for those you don't want to send 10 percent coupon for all your customer so if you send 10 percent coupon for 10,000 customers you're gonna lose money because some of those are not gonna purchase big products if you send 10% for something really simple, small, you're not going to take advantage of the whole idea of uh, Black Friday. People are going to purchase huge products that are uh, expensive that you're going to make a profit on them. So this is what is called uh, the ROC R uh, ROC function, and we're going to see it during the semester. And if you want to understand what's going on in this function is the following. As you can see, <clears throat> the X axis is the percent of customers contacted. So how many out of all your customers you want only the 10%? So you're going to take only the 10%. Those are the 10% customer that you want to contact. Okay. And now on the Y axis, this is a profit. This is a profit that last year you made according to those customers and you uh, ordered the customers uh, in descending order based on uh, less importance that's mean those customers their numbers are starting from zero to 25 percent are the most important customers uh, compared to the rest okay so they are ordered in descending order of importance Okay, so now we know that those customers in those area and you want 10%, that means I want those customers in this area here. I want to find them and I want to know uh, based on the ranking of my predictive model, how much profit uh, the company is going to make according to this model. As you can see, the red line on this graph here uh, is what is called the random sample. So if you did not apply any any algorithm uh, from the uh, tools that we have in Rapid Miner, you use just a flipping of a coin, uh, whom to pick uh, among your customers. Look what's gonna happen. You have to remember what you're sending. You are sending discounts, so you are losing profit. You know, you are losing money to take advantage of your customer. So technically, based on the graph here in front of us, if you send those promotions to all your customers, the 100%, the 10,000 customers, you're going to lose about almost $600,000 by not using a predictive model to help you pick the most important 10% customers. Okay, that's just the whole secret about the importance of building a predictive model to detect and discover knowledge from your customer data to find the one that they are going to purchase based on the promotion that you send and not only purchase, they're going to make big purchases that you're going to benefit the most from. So let us go back here. So you went ahead and you used the data mining algorithms we're going to talk about, and you build a model, maybe decision tree model. And based on that model, you come up with this chart. So this is the predictive model output and not the random sampling out output. Okay. Uh, so if you send, uh, imagine each uh, dot in this graph is about 5% of the customers, okay? So this is 
the first five percent the most important five percent of your customers if you only send to five percent of your customers in our case 500 customers as we said we have about thousand if ten percent so that means we have if you pick the most important 500 customers that visit your store you're gonna make a profit hundred thousand dollar that's what the model is saying if you send to the 10 percent of your customers to those 10 percent the top most important uh, customers if you send them those promotions you are gonna end up profiting an amount of two hundred thousand dollars double the amount now if you send to the top 15 percent of your customers you're gonna profit almost let's say 300 about 280,000 not only that if you send to the 20 percent of your customers you're gonna profit almost 300 maybe 40 thousand dollar that's the closest to this uh, index value and look what's happening uh, after the 20 percent you can see the profit now is going down so if you send uh, to the 25 you you were in a better uh, option if you send only to 20. now if you send to the 30 also you started to get less profit 35 less profit and guess what if you're gonna send to the 50 percent of your customers over here you're gonna end up almost having just one third of the profit so if you send promotion to 50 percent of your customers we said we have 10,000 you you're gonna set if you decided to send uh, coupons you decide to send coupons to 5,000 customers that are you have their profile in the store you will get one third of the profit if you only send to the top 20 percent that's the secret of predictive modeling just knowing who are those customers that's a big deal who are those customers that if you send them this specific promotion during that specific time of the year based on their previous historical information that you know about them you're gonna have a profit however if you send to those promotion not to the one that you are randomly you pick you are losing all the time because you don't know who is important and who is not randomly you're picking those customers so that's the idea of the whole concept of applying data mining algorithms machine learning algorithm into business data the idea is to know how to use this information to realize and to discover the most important rules the most important customers based on the rule that you are applying to to make a bigger profit okay so we're gonna go into those what is called the lift chart very similar concept and at the end of the semester so uh, don't bother understanding this chart only focus on this one if you understood from my video the meaning of this chart that's all i want you to take away for the first class in the semester now when we say business rules what do we mean by business rules okay so you might have a new customer and you don't know what kind of activities that customers or uh, that customer is gonna uh, or what kind of purchases is gonna make so here is one example of business rule new customers who come to the website let's say website of best buy okay so new customers who come to the website of organic search results okay what they mean of organic search is all that they mean that mean they went maybe to google search engine and they were searching for a product 
uh, or they went to Yahoo or Bing, you name it. So it's, it, they didn't go directly to your website, to your company website. So the business rule following says those customers who are searching for a product on Google or similar search engine buy more than $150 on their first transaction on your website. That's what the data is telling you. And they are male and they have an email address that ends with .net. Not only that, they are three times as likely to be return customers. So it's your goal now. So this is your predictive model is giving you, it's giving you uh, a gold information. This is, this is a golden rule for you now to look at those transactions. Who are those customers, your new customers? We don't have them in our repo repository. We don't have transactions with them. They just used the Google search engine to purchase, let's say, TV or, or laptop, and they landed on our website, Best Buy website. They never, they don't have a, uh, even a credit card with Best Buy. They ended up purchasing the first time and paying $150. And not only that, their email address is with extension.net. And not only that, highly likely that they gonna return. Okay, so this is one of the types of predictive model is gonna give you from your data. Now that we we have an overall idea of what we can do with data mining, just giving you the sense of the type of project we're gonna do at the end of the semester or exercises you're gonna do through the semester if you're an online student. Let me give you some ideas about what the meaning of business analytics. Business analytics uh, can be divided into three different domains. The descriptive analytics, and that's the part that covered by your introduction to data analytics BDN 310, all you did is did some type of statistics, you summarized the information of your data, you created histograms, you looked at the frequency tables, you will com come up with some hypothesis testing, and you looked and decided if it was true or untrue, and you decided to carry on with your next step with that data. So it's more of a descriptive summary of your data that you were dealing with. This course, the data mining course, is, uh, is considered or falls under what is called predictive analytics. So the predictive analytics has many different names, classification, regression, time series, forecasting, you name it. Uh, so that's a type that you're going to do by the end of the semester. Now we're going to touch base on what is called prescriptive analytics. That's the role of uh, a businessman who got the information from the predictive modeling and now it's job to apply it, enhance it, optimize it and make it as part of the business model. So during the course of data mining, you're gonna see the predictive model output. Now, since you don't work in an in, in, in a organization to use this information, you won't be able to apply it to a real life scenario. But if you were, and you have real data from the, the business or the organization you're working in right now, you might consider using the data from your organization, applying the predictive model, creating a model, and then going back to your uh, to your boss and telling him, I have this model, let us apply it automatically on our data. So in future, I don't have to run this algorithm again. All I have to do is to see how the model is gonna score on new customers, and then you can tweak it over and over again. Okay, 
So what type, uh, if you're going to look at those three types of analytical models, uh, as we say, the descriptive and predictive and prescriptive, each one of them has different type of questions that can answer. And also it has different type of techniques and technologies that you can use to uh, apply to this type of analytical domain. So for example, in the descriptive uh, analytics, uh, standard reports that you can run maybe from access, or you can create a dashboard like we did last semester from uh, using Jump or from Excel as a summary of the data. And what kind of questions you're gonna, you're gonna uh, ask on this type of data, how am I doing? How my business is doing? Uh, why is it happening? Why the profit this year maybe is half than last year? Let me look at the data. Let me uh, let summarize it, visualize it, and let's see what's going on. What, who, which type of customers we are losing? So what else? Who is involved in it? Who is involved in the process that maybe we are losing data, uh, losing customers? So maybe you have branches, your business has multiple branches. Maybe your, your main branch is doing great, but branches in different locations are not, or some specific location is not. So you have to look and discover and find it and make a decision, business decision to close it, for example. Now, in the predictive analytics domain where you use here we go uh, we are using data mining or text mining you have forecasting and you have some type of upper level statistical analysis what you are doing here is what else is most likely to happen you are predicting you are forecasting how else will it happen okay how long will it continue to happen so you might be able to survive the the less profit that you are making this year compared to the previous year but how long you're gonna survive it okay uh, are you gonna be capable of paying off the uh, the amount of uh, uh, of money you put on your production on uh, inquiring and getting the product to your store you know so you have to ask that question Finally, the prescriptive analytics, where I say you optimize, you apply, you optimize, and you make a decision. How can the best be realized? What all is involved in this happening? So you're gonna see all those branches. What is the best that can happen? Okay, so you are trying to optimize and get much better uh, profit. So for instance, uh, in this graph I showed you here, if your boss said, go and give me 10% of my customers, of our customers that we're going to send promotion to so we can take advantage of a Black Friday, you might come back and tell your boss, actually, if you only consider 10%, we're going to have 10, uh, 200,000 profit. However, I would advise you uh, to have 20% of those customers to send a promotion because at that case, you will have at least uh, one time, like one third more. If it's 200, uh, almost 300 plus, 330, you're going to have more, uh, even uh, I would say like 50%, more than 50% more profit than sending only for 10 percent for, for 10 yeah so so let's divide this by by uh, 50 percent 100,000 so that's it so you will convince so when you are trying to do that what you are trying to do in this domain over here you are trying to make some heuristic decision based on what the data is telling you to convince to convince your boss that we are better off, we will make more profit if we optimize our model for sending promotion. Instead of sending to 10% of our customers, let us send, for example, to 20% of or 25% of our customers based on the model you have. Okay, so the whole idea uh, is you are trying 
in data mining uh, to get as much as data as you want and you have and take advantage of it to summarize it to come as an information for you and accordingly you're going to make some type of relevant and actionable decision uh, with this data and that what is called the knowledge you get from the data the knowledge you get from the information you have by summarizing it and creating some type of business rule that you can uh, get wisdom about what their customers are doing or what they are going to do okay any data mining uh, project uh, in any organization in the world involve the following type of domains or disciplines and as you can see data mining is multi multidisciplinary approach to knowledge discovery we are want to discover information and knowledge about our customers using statistics using artificial intelligence and we're going to talk about those using machine learning and pattern recognition using information visualization such as dashboards for example and also how we got the data from the first place is from using the database management and data warehousing uh, that we have information this data could be locally like best buy have data of their local customers but also they have data about their regional customers also they have data about their website customers all this type of different management systems to help us to dig into this data and what kind of information or systems we use, we don't know. Maybe they are using Oracle, maybe they are using SQL, maybe they are using MySQL behind the scene. And therefore, they are involved in what is called a management science discipline, an information system discipline that take care of that part of the data housing. Okay. So here is a bigger picture of what data mining on its own can do in general. So you have three different type of domains uh, of data mining. You have the prediction here where you're going to predict what the customer going to buy next. Okay. And you use many different type of algorithms. There's something else. There is association rules. Another domain, for example, the most popular uh, association rule, which is called market basket analysis rule, uh, that tells you, uh, very popular in the data mining, when data mining started to appear in, 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 uh, in the business uh, world like 20 years ago, but now the last three, four or five years ago became very easy to every business even small businesses to apply it so the old uh, very old saying that a customer uh, who goes on sunday night a male customer let me refine it a male customer who goes to walmart on sunday night purchase diaper and milk highly likely will purchase beer as well so you can guess the scenario so they found this pattern in their data Walmart that on Sunday night guys are going the wife and they are having a new baby the wife sending the the husband to Walmart to buy diapers and milk you know before the starting of the of the weekdays and of course the guy is really overwhelmed with all this baby issues and crying so here we go he got a beer with him and went home so Walmart took advantage of that concept that they found this pattern in the data which is called association rules uh, also it's called market basket analysis and what they did they started to put the beer so far away from the uh, diapers and the milk so uh, the male going on sunday night to buy those uh, items until he goes to buy the beer he's gonna get tempted with all these different products walking from 
far far distance to another uh, alley where the beer is located in this way they can he can uh, be attracted by other products to purchase and that was the way they profiting from learning about this association rule or association business rule last one is what is called clustering Clustering is another type of data mining that falls under what is called a supervised learning. And we're going to touch base on that. Clustering is a way where you want to segment people together. So we know the, the concept of clustering in biology, and it came from the biology, actually. Uh, so you heard about the clusters of, uh, of ants. They cluster together and uh, the, uh, the, the, the honeybees, they cluster, they create a cluster, similarity between them. So we're going to use those concepts to apply them to business data to find profile of people that they are similar to each other. This is what Amazon is doing. So when Amazon uh, give you an advice of a purchase uh, that's for those people who purchased what you purchased in the past, they also purchase those new products that you've never thought of purchasing them or you never seen them before but now what Amazon is doing is looking at your profile is looking at who are those cluster of people similar to your profile and say hey hello here we go let's give that person similar product that those people purchased beside the one he did already and that's a concept of clustering. Also, there is a uh, application of clustering on outliers, and we're going to talk about it. Now, I uh, just wanted to make you aware that there are many different softwares in the area of data mining, and many complicated and many simplistic type of programs or programming languages. However, every year uh, there's a big pool of uh, the most intelligent uh, uh, business uh, organizers that they run and they do voting for all the businesses in the world uh, and actually uh, looked at the people opinion about products that is used or software used to apply data mining applications. Of course, you want applications that they are uh, sophisticated, that they are capable of running new algorithms that is friendly, uh, has user-friendly interface, and uh, not so heavy on programming, and most importantly, it is accurate. You want an accurate product. So those who you use and you notice that they are giving you some business rules that not make sense at all, so that's why the ranking of those will go low. So look at uh, the orders of those products. Number one, and that was uh, the poll of last year, number one is RapidMiner. This is the software we're going to use in this course. Uh, as I mentioned uh, it, uh, on the introduction of this unit, that this software costs $10,000 per year per user for non-educational entity. Since you are a student uh, and I am a faculty, we both have access to that software for free uh, for as, as much as you want to use it for uh, as many years as you want to use it as long as you're using your educational email to subscribe to this software. <clears throat> so you have to renew the license every year because also they come up with a newer version However, as, as you can see here, this is the highest use. Now, as you can see, 35% of the users of, uh, that they say that they are using RapidMiner the most. We can see R, we can see Excel, we can see Jump over here and many more. So you are lucky that you're going to use the most used and acknowledged software uh, developed in Germany and they have their headquarters here in Boston. It's really good software. Uh, also, it has a certificate, online certificate. So maybe by the end of the year, try to apply to this certificate online and add it to your resume as a skill. And it's really highly valued uh, skill. So 
The idea of building a complete solution, business solution, goes into many different stages. So before even applying any data mining algorithms, uh, as you can see in this stage over here, there is what is called the knowledge discovery of databases process, KDD. So the first letter abbreviation uh, came from the K and DDD. So the KDD process, all businesses are aware of that process. So whenever you have data of your customers, of your business, <coughs> you want to discover knowledge from it, it has to go through the following uh, the, uh, part of analysis. So you start with the raw data, that means data that not related to each other, just has information, maybe an Excel file. Then you gather them together, you select them, maybe you use some SQL or Oracle or MySQL, you name it, to, uh, to, uh, to put it in a format that you can utilize it uh, uh, in uh, in a software that can allow you to prepare the data the way you want it. Now, of course, you have to do data cleaning because a lot of the time, those information you get about your customers over the web might have some information that are missing, some information entered wrong. A lot of people answer surveys or fill forms with mistakes. So you have to take care of all this. Otherwise, you cannot run the data mining algorithm. Then you go into what is called the pre-processing data with the data cleaning and filtering. Then you go to transforming the data in which way you convert it into flat tables that you can utilize it for uh, running the algorithm on it. Okay, and that doesn't mean to be, uh, doesn't have to be with Rapid Miner, it could be with R, it could be with Python, you name it. So, but the process, all this process goes exactly the same, no matter what the software you're gonna use in this stage over here. And finally, you are trying to find the patterns and knowledge from this data, and here where you are uh, able to get this knowledge and to use it to benefit uh, your business. Now, I should mention here that there are many different type of schema uh, to apply data mining, okay, uh, or the knowledge discovery in your data. We're going to see in the uh, next class something called the CRISP model, but the same idea applies. The one mentioned in this graph, and I felt I have to put it here because you might consider taking a class in SAS in econ department. Uh, so SAS also is a software that you can run data mining algorithms, machine learning algorithm on it. So if you ended up uh, working with uh, SAS, the, the, the knowledge discovery that you see here, it goes into what is called the SEMA architecture. And the schema of, uh, of SEMA is just the following. You start first with your data, a sample of your data, okay? And then you try to explore that data, visualize the data in, in SAS, maybe in, in SAS Enterprise Guide or SAS Enterprise Miner. After that, you try to modify, transform the data to make it uh, uh, in a way that you can utilize it. For example, maybe you have gender, uh, some data entries uh, F, some data entries female, complete word, some data entry male, complete word, some data entry M. So you want to be consistent. So you're gonna transform all this data, whatever it says female is gonna be F as well. Whatever is male is gonna be M. So now you end up with all the data has only those two options, F or M. So this is the type of transforming I'm talking about. And there are many different types. Binning, for example, is transforming. Then you're gonna create a model <clears throat> and then you're gonna assess the model. You have to assess the model. And you start, it's a cycle as you can see, and the model we're gonna use in this course, data mining is called the CRISP model, similar to this. Again, it's continuous process, you don't stop. You assess, you find the model, then you might get another sample and you repeat, okay? So data and data mining in general can be uh, divided into two types of data and that's the beauty of data mining. 
historically in statistics, you only used the numbers or categorical type of data to, uh, to analyze data. However, with data mining, you can use Twitter data, which is text. You can use uh, Facebook forums, which is text. Uh, you can use whatever you want. So that's what is called unstructured data, such as images, audio, video, okay? text, HTML, XML. So this is a new domain now that merged and that's why businesses are more and more involved in data mining because information now are coming not in the regular statistical format that we are used to have numerical and categorical to run uh, SPSS, for example, or to run uh, Strata, if you are using Strata, or to run R, or to run uh, Python. The, the new era now, you are using unstructured data, textual data, images, and videos, and, and etc. And Python and R now is, is capable, most of them, both programming languages are capable of handling also unstructured data. Okay. So here is a summary of what you do really in any predictive model. You start by data, you pre-process your data, you clean, you filter, you decide what you're going to use from your data. Then you take two thirds of this data, you train it to create a model, and one third you hide the predictive model there and you call it testing data. You apply this data on the model and you try to see how well this model that you created by the training data did well. Then in the future, when a new data comes that doesn't have uh, the highly likely that person you're gonna, is gonna purchase, for example, gloves or hat, etc., or piano, uh, you don't know what that person is gonna do, but you have a model that in the past noticed that model, that those people who are high, uh, they have high salaries and they purchased, uh, for example, gloves, they ended up purchasing, for example, a uh, piano. Okay, so that's the whole idea. And again, this is just a simple intro. We're going to learn how to do all these. Now, when you build your model, uh, this is again uh, another rock curve that I showed you before about the profit. Uh, you might end up having more than one model. So as you can see here, we have model A, we have model B, we have model C, which is, uh, this is random sampling. So you have to decide which one to pick. And we're gonna go and understand why, for example, A is better than B. Okay, so just remember always, the, the higher the pump is, the better the model is. That means you can get more uh, deciding which customers you're gonna uh, take advantage of at the beginning and with the highest profit, that's the whole idea. Okay, so uh, in general, uh, that's the concept of uh, if you want to find an optimal uh, and determine the solution of the process based on some type of metric of uh, uh, and value of k, so how many times you're going to repeat that process. So you have historical data, you cut it between training and validation or testing, as we said. Uh, the time being considered is like testing. So you do that and you, you find the output, you have a model, uh, you keep uh, optimizing until the model gets better and better. You keep repeating, iterating, iterating. And then finally, when you reach a point, you say, oh, I am happy, I'm satisfied with the accuracy and the level of uh, precision my model is producing. Then you get new data and you apply it to the model and that data will tell you the highly likely what that customer is gonna do. Okay, now uh, in general, uh, that's the same idea how you're going to do it, apply it for, for example, a regression model. Yeah, it's the same idea. You have the data, you're going to assess the data first to see how well uh, the data is, either by looking at the correlation metrics, you're going to create some scatter plot between the variables in that data. Then you're going to create, uh, you transform uh, this data and you're going to try to fit it on a model. Yeah, and then you're going to assess again and try to deploy it. This is, the, this is the type of deployment I was telling you about that if you work for Best Buy, uh, so they, you do all this prediction, but finally you have to apply the model on real customers, new real customers coming to the store. 
uh, for instance, give you an, an example. Let's say you don't have a Best Buy card. You walked into Best Buy and decided today you want to open a Best, uh, Best Buy uh, credit, credit line. You went there, they told you, okay, fill this form from us and come back after 10 minutes. So what they are really doing, they're taking your information, plugging the information you entered, your location, how much your salary, do you own a car or not, do you own your own house, etc. And then this information is considered like here, you, this is your new data. And they have plenty of, uh, they have a model that related to plenty of other customers similar or not to your profile okay and based on what happened to those customers in the past the model is saying that customer who those customers or let's say 80 percent of those customers that they have a similar profile like you they default it so let's say your profile, you don't own a car, you don't own a house, and you don't have a salary, you're just a student, and you're asking for $14,000 credit line or 5000 Of course, they're going to run all this data, and what's going to happen, the, the program will tell them, we looked at the data, historically we gave credit line to this type of people, and 80% of the time they defaulted, they didn't pay back what they own us. So you will come up, they will come up with a rejection, they're going to reject your... Uh, your um, uh, request or sometimes what happened they will say yeah we'll accept your request but uh, we are only going to give you a credit line of $500 because they have information historical data about customers similar to your profile with credit line 500 between maybe 1500 and the number of default was maybe 10% only so they will take the risk and they will give you 500 okay but 90 percent of them they didn't default so that's a good outcome so beside that so this is how you're going to look at the regression model they want to know how much money they're going to give you here so here is not decision only to give you or not give you a credit a credit line here decision is to give you but with different amount okay now Finally, uh, this is a new domain started to appear uh, in data mining, which is called text analytics. That involve you have plenty of document, could be web document, uh, Facebook, uh, your browsing behavior on Facebook, whatever you wrote there is all text. Also, for example, search engine, whatever you search on Google search engine can be used. Tags, whatever pictures you tag on your Facebook, all this can be utilized also to browse your behaviors. And what kind of data mining algorithms, or you would say text mining algorithm, we use related to uh, this area of research is very similar to the data mining. It uses machine learning, and many different disciplines are involved statistics, artificial intelligence, computer science, management science, and many more the other disciplines okay so simply put this is what you really uh, you are doing you are trying to get information no matter what kind of information about your customer maybe structured data like databases like excel access uh, from oracle from sql or it could be unstructured data as we saw maybe from the web blogs and maybe your twitter uh, information etc so beside that uh, you have uh, some tools and techniques you're going to use for extracting knowledge from the text now and you need somehow domain expertise those people who uh, get information from twitter they know that how t twitter functions so they are expert about uh, if you retweet it it's different than when you write a new tweet okay that's what it meant all this information the software information privacy issues linguistic information about the language maybe you're using different languages and the English all this is gonna give you context specific knowledge about your customers who are tweeting maybe about your product or writing some comments on the Facebook of your company okay so 
in general and is getting more and more complex uh, as you can see uh, you might have document collections text co uh, collection established from uh, your organization you so you get you have a complete data uh, structured and structured data you're going to convert it into structured data to extract knowledge and then to, to be able to convert text into what is called knowledge as regular data that we are familiar with so you're going to convert any type of text data from twitter facebook you name it into data tables that has information about those texts and this is how it looks so if you have a text mining algorithm the text mining algorithm for example looks at the document one imagine document one was uh, the first tweet you sent today in that first tweet you uh, mentioned the word investment risk one time okay uh, you did not mention the word project management or software engineering you mentioned development one time and that's it okay now uh, maybe another customer from the other uh, uh, type of purchases purchased something and then tweeted something about our product uh, it, that product is related to project management so in his tweet he mentioned the word project management one time and that's it another customer maybe tweeted something related to our software engineering domain and he, he mentioned the word software engineering three times in that tweet and he word, mentioned the word SAP one time etc so this is the idea you are converting terms that used in tweets here in our case documents into into a regular table that we are familiar with that we can run any statistical if i put this data on jump jump is going to share for me for example uh five times a word software engineering been 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 used today on tweet uh the word for example investment risk only mentioned it twice okay etc so here are some examples just so you can imagine uh we have excel data that has information about some specific journals uh, the row number one is the header we have the idea of that journal we have which year that journal uh, has this, uh, this article in it and then we have the name of the journal and then the abstract what the person wrote in that article so this is text data our goal is to maybe mine the data uh, sorry mine the data in the text and understand what is the most used topic uh, during uh, the year of between 1999 and 2005 for example just to know topic extraction for example so here is the big wide range of sources in big data and we're going to hear a lot the uh, the word big data uh, big data started to appear uh, as a term uh, in the business and in the market a couple of years ago not so far a long time ago because now we have uh, resources and platforms that can handle big data and we're gonna get into the specificity specificity of the uh, big data big data you cannot say you have big data unless you have something called volume you have a volume huge amount of data and also you have variety of type of data not only numerical and categorical you have video audio text structure and structure that's the meaning and also the velocity of the data so the big data whenever you're going to talk about big data you have to mention those three type of uh, information the volume of the data it's big variety there are different types and formats of the data and the velocity of the data so you can see here where each uh, one of those falls for example if the volume is high and uh, the variety and velocity is high these are the the wide range of sources associated with data of big data for example you will see sensors and now we are seeing those sensors more and more uh, for example the uh, the the nest uh, the ring uh, for example uh, cameras now in every corner of your house that you can sensor movement and send to your phone automatically all this became 
became uh, possible because of the uh, revolution of the big data and the capability of doing some type of data mining and saving and filtering and managing all this type of information. As you can see, the medium area is dealing with video, audio, tweets, blogs, etc. Where the old fashioned way, the business process where you save data locally or on the cloud, uh, you name it. So and this is the last slide in this video. Uh, you can talk about uh, how you can leverage big data and analytics for political campaign. This is just an example. And, uh, and actually, with the first time ever, big data was utilized with data mining uh, during uh, Obama first term. So actually, he hired a company, a data mining company from Chicago. They were the one uh, targeting all the tweet, all the Facebook post, all the information over the web, all the uh, data repositories related to, to voters in the past, all this type of information to be able to detect and know exactly which houses that they needed to go and visit the last week and to be guaranteed that those houses gonna vote for him. And it worked. So if you Google a little bit about Obama campaign, the first term and the word data mining, you get into a lot of algorithms being published over the web about how it happened. So input data sources, what kind you think of sources they used? Send all the census data from population, specific age, race, sex, income, and every location in US. Uh, they also use data from the election databases, okay? Uh, the historical data, the party affiliation, previous election outcome, trends and distribution of all this. Market research, they look at the polls, they looked at the trend and the movement over time before even, uh, uh, you know, considering any movement in the election. Social media, they collected data, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, news groups, blogs, you name it, web pages, of course, and many, many other type of uh, data sources. All this with the idea is to create uh, a data mining uh, platform uh, that utilizes big data and use the analytic uh, type of uh, processing uh, machine learning algorithm to predict the outcome and trends, okay? To identify association between events and outcomes, to assess and measure the sentiment of people on topic. So the, this is how he decided which topic to, mentions, uh, to mention and which topics not to mention during the, his speeches uh, and based on the location of his speeches. Profiling, clustering those group of people based on similarity of behavior and accordingly finding those patterns and targeting those uh, voters with message that can overlap to what they have been doing over the internet and knowing exactly what they want to hear. So they use data mining, web mining, text mining, multimedia mining algorithms. The output, which was the goal, raise money contributions, increase number of voter, uh, volunteers, organize movement, create a sense of urgency, mobilize voters to get out and vote, and definitely anything that can help the political campaign to succeed during the process. And beside that, the lesson learned from the first term was utilized again over and over for the second term. So, and continuous improvements, what we say data mining is not one time, it's a continuous process. That's enough for overview. Next classes are gonna be much easier. We just uh, give you here an overall idea what you can do with data mining. It is really uh, uh, a very dangerous weapon to use. And if you are good at it, you are guaranteed to have a very good, appealing and interesting job. Okay, so we'll see you in the next video.